Fashion Costume. It is Wednesday, the 3rd of July, and it's a beautiful sunny winter day here. And um, if you've stumbled across this channel for the first time, my name is Claire, otherwise known as Pyrex Stitches. I collect Pyrex. And I also cross stitch. I mainly talk about cross stitch. But sometimes I talk about Pyrex. What have I got that you haven't seen? See those little bowls there? There's a turquoise and white and there's a pink and white just there. I got those recently. They're actually not Pyrex. They're Fire King. Fire King's like a poor cousin of Pyrex. It's a similar product. Sometimes it fits. I actually don't have any other Fire King up there, I don't think. But because it was turquoise and pink, how could I say no? It could come and live with its cousins. So that's a new new little bit. What else is new? I've had some new bits. I'm trying to think. No, you've seen that. You've seen that. There's some other turquoise things that might be new. I'm not sure if you've seen those ones. Anyway, that's the Pyrex. Um, so we had Stitch Mania. The last time we talked, I was... Um, organizing my mania plans and I'm just going to have a sip of coffee because it's morning. Now I read this um, article, the love heart's worn off because I've washed this cup so much. I've never been to New York but my parents have and it's a really nice shaped mug. Anyway, but mm, I read this article that apparently over 50% of the Australian population prefer instant coffee and I am in that club. I mean I don't mind a cappuccino but i got to say Oh, instant coffee. It's like the elixir of life. That's my fourth today. Is that bad? I don't care. I don't do anything else bad. That's it. Anyway, back to cross stitch. We spoke about stitch mania and I had my plans and my plans went pretty well, if I remember correctly. It's a bit of a while. I mean, we're, we're talking two months here. Anyway, that's not unusual for me. So... Mania was all about M for mania, M for everything, the theme of M. So I picked up, first of all, my Teresa Winsler Mermaid. Here she's here. If you've seen my channel before, you've seen this girl because she's been around for a while. I think it's uh, two, maybe even three years. Anyway, um, so this is where we're at. So I just worked, because I only worked on it for a week, um, so I just did in, I filled in a bit more of the water down here, sort of got all this sort of, you know, I'm sort of doing the cross-country thing with this. Um, I was going to do parking, but I, it doesn't really work for parking. So I just um, I just start filling in and working down doing cross-country. Now someone commented and said, that they wanted to know why I hadn't stitched the mermaid over here, like why have I left this? And someone said, oh, it's because she's saving the best for last. No, it's I'm just being practical. <laughs> it's like I start at the top and so I start with the sky and I did all the sky and then I filled in this rock here and then I filled in this rock ledge here and then you start filling in the water. And if I fill her in next, it's like it's different colours and it's just it, it doesn't fit my vibe. Um, and because... As we all know, Teresa Winsler is full of blended threads, so I like to use the full length of thread before I move on to the next colour. I don't, you know, anyway. Um, it all makes sense to me. So Teresa Winsler, she's stitched on a 28 count. I believe it's a Monaco, but I'm not sure. It just says it's an even weave. I think this is Monaco. Um, and I love her, and I'm just, it's just a labour of love. I'm just going to, as if you've ever seen anyone who's stitched a Teresa Winslow, it always seems to go through a bit of a cycle of, you know, this is a bit of a, it's a bit of a task. But it's so enjoyable to watch it come together and, you know, red has made its way on there. Um, so, yeah, there's no deadline. But I've achieved my goal of working on all my whips this year already. So everything's had at least a week's worth of stitching done on it. So I'm... I'm happy with that. Funny how your goals change and your expectation of what you're going to get done. I used to, I used to. if you've watched my channel for a few years, you'd know that I used to do very strict um, rotation where I would work on, I had four whips and I would work on each whip for one week. That's my dishwasher going. I hope you can't hear that. 
um, I'd work on each of my whips for a week and then I'd start all over again and I was very rigid on that. But I seemed to have more time to stitch back then. Um, I had more time in my day. I had my son was at home, you know, he was going to preschool or even pre-preschool before he was, there's the cat meowing to go outside. Puss, puss, you want to come and say hello? No, she wants to go outside. Too bad. Um, she's been outside playing all morning. Um, so I had more time to stitch back then because we'd be at home and he'd nap and then, you know, just doing the mum things and whatever. Anyway, so now my rotation is far. Stitch mania is the most strict I um, really am with my stitching nowadays. I just enjoy a month of having something that I'm specifically doing and everything else is kind of whatever goes. Sorry, more coffee. Mm. Oh, my God, I love it. Okay, so um, after Teresa, just following on here with my Instagram, if you want to know what I'm doing all the time because I, I don't make regular videos. I make a video maybe every month, every two months, something like that. But if you like what I stitch and you want to see what I'm doing, you can follow me on Instagram and I try and post there regularly, although I haven't done very well in the last recently. But anyway, that's where I'm most active is Instagram, which is at Pyrex Stitches or at Pyrex Stitches. And that's also on Facebook. You can find me there too if you're more of a Facebooker than an Instagrammer. Um, yeah, so then after, I'm just going to let the cat out because she's scratching the door and it's made. Who can blame her? She's an indoor cat, but she just goes outside sometimes during the day and she's too fat to jump the fence. So she just hangs out in our backyard and we've got a large backyard. So it's like a bit of a cat wonderland out there. But she's just gone out and she's just literally sitting by the back door. Whatever. Anyway, cats. Cats of Instagram. Um, so then I moved on to my next M. The next week was with Red, which is by Mirabilia. Oh, I better show you. <laughs> As if you don't know what this one looks like. She's been very popular and around for a long time. This is Red. Number, what pattern number is this? I remember when this came out. 128. And here she is. So I think I worked on, where was I up to when I started on her? Oh, yeah, so I finished the point of this part of her, I guess it's her bodice of her dress. So I finished down here and I worked on the cape out here. It was only a week. Um, but, of course, mirabilias are they're easy to stitch. Don't be intimidated. If you've never stitched mirabilia and you think, oh, no, this looks too fancy for me, it's not. It's an illusion of fancy. It's just that's all. There's DMC and there's some Farrah Water lilies in there, but they're not much and they're beautiful to work with anyway. And they're just full crosses. I'm doing the skin on this just a full cross rather than a, um, sorry, a one over, two over two, sorry. <laughs> I'm doing skin just normal two over two. I'm not doing any fancy one over one on skin just because I think, I just don't think it really matters. We were talking, I was talking about this with some of my stitchy friends and about whether you need to do the skin one over one. And I really think it's a personal preference. I stitched um, Celtic Christmas. I'll put a photo in here for you. So Celtic Christmas, which is lavender and lace. So it's by Nora's mother, Marilyn. Um, I stitched that one over one, but there wasn't much skin, so it was easy. One over one full cross, and then I stitched Gypsy Queen. I'll insert that here. And Gypsy Queen, I did two over one tenth stitch, which is just doing a half cross over one, so very small. And I think that two over one tenth stitch gives the same effect as one over one full cross, except it's half the work because you're only having to go that way, not that way and then that way and back. So, and then this one I'm just doing two over two because I don't know. I don't know why. It wasn't even a conscious decision. I just, I don't think it matters. I think one over one or two over one tenth stitch. I think it looks good and I think sometimes it gives a dimension to the mirabilia because it's the, okay let me see if I can explain this without sounding like a ding dong um, the clothing's in front of your skin it's on top 
And sometimes I feel like if you do the skin one over one, it can kind of give that illusion that it is actually further back than the cloth, than the clothing of the of the piece. So I can I do think it can do that, but I don't think it takes anything away from a mirabilia just doing it normal two over one and it, two over two, and it's just easy, full crosses, whatever. So basically take all the snobbery out of it and do what you feel like. I've seen mirabilia is absolutely stunning. Just two over two on Ada. Let's just look at the example of everything that Sylvana's ever done. If you've ever seen any of Sylvana's work on the mirabilia conversion pages, my dear friend Sylvana, you'll see her stuff and it's on Ada and it is uh, breathtaking. Some of the best work you'll ever see, you know, so it doesn't matter. Just do what you want. So that was red. I worked on her for a week. And then I picked up another M, another Mirabilia, Sabrina. Sabrina is number 106. And she is, I've always really loved this one. I just like her dress. Very pretty. Um, and this is a stitch along I'm doing with my friend Sandra. Hi, Sandra. We both started working on this at the same time last year, I think. Was it July? Last year? Might have been a year. She might be a year old if I'm getting my dates right. Anyway, so I picked up Sabrina for a week and I just didn't get a lot of chance to work on her. I basically, I think I just did this bit up here. Nothing really crazy. Um, oh, I should just tell you this fabric, if you haven't, I do say it every video, but red is on Sew It All Grey Retro and Even Weave, 32 count, and this is on a 32 count um, Violet Haze, also by Sew It All. Beautiful and soft fabric, highly recommended. And um, I didn't get a lot of chance to stitch on Dear Sabrina, but that was all for good reason. And that was because I went away on a little stitchy retreat with some of my dearest stitchy sisters. Um, we go to Mittagon one, once a year, and it's just a small group of friends, and we have a just the best time, the best time. I'm just so lucky to have these girls in my life. They are just the best, the best. You know who you are, and I love them dearly, and it's just if you are lucky enough to have people in your life who are also cross-stitchers, you are just the luckiest person, and I am lucky because I have these girls who don't live close to me, but we get to get together regularly and we met mainly, most of us met, well, we met at a Mirabilia retreat and then we also met here on Floss Tube. Um, and I also have my two friends who live in my town who I see every month and we cross-stitch together, Virginia and Julie. So we are, I'm very lucky indeed to have these women in my life. Anyway, so we got together. We drank pina coladas. I'm going to put the photo in, Joe. It's coming. Here it is. That is Vintage Chic Stitcher with her Vintage Chic Stitcher T-shirt on too. Ah, she's just the best. Joe's the best. Um, making pina coladas that were, <laughs> were amazing. Amazing. Um, so while I was at the retreat, I'm calling it a retreat, but look, it's not a retreat. It's just a group of friends who get together and stitch. Um, but it's still a retreat, I guess, isn't it? Uh, so while I was there, I started on this piece, which is uh, I bought last year when I was with these girls in Mittagong at Victoria House, which is a cross-stitch store there, you may or may not know. And I bought this there. This is by Janlin. It's a platinum collection, and it's called um, Seven Wonders of the Ancient World Map. So I bought that a year ago as a kit, and I decided to start it while I was there this year. And this is where I'm at. Didn't get a lot done because... Pina coladas, talking, other things. Um, that's all I, sorry, that's all I got done. So I've just got around the bottom of Africa, you know, the African continent, and I guess that's Madagascar there. We're working around here. Um, so that's all I've got to. So it's on a blue um, linen, which is nice, and there's actually a lot of gaps in this. There's a lot of the cloth showing through on the map there. All the countries in the ocean is just blank space. Um, so it's, I mean, it's not huge. This is the size project I generally like to work on, but it's, I don't think it's going to take long once I get into it because like I said, there's a lot of blank area. Um, let me have some more coffee cause it's the best. Mm. 
Um, and I started on that, but let's face it, when you're surrounded by seven women, it's a lot of talking. It's a lot of discussion. It's a lot of eating. We didn't drink that much, but we did a bit. Um, that was just wonderful. So while I was there, we all, you know, we, we had a bit of gift exchange and things like that, and I got a couple of things which I'm just going to share with you. Um, this one here came from Joe. It's the best thing ever. Claire's to-do list, eat, sleep, cross-stitch, repeat. That is my life. How did you know? <sighs> one girl cannot have too many tote bags. Especially when everything – and another the, – the, the other motto is one cannot have too many projo bags, apparently. That is also a thing. Um, so that was from Joe. This one here, which I need to start because I've seen some of my friends start this one. I actually saw Stephanie Lindy Stitches has got this one too, and I'm sure they got it from the same place because Cash went to Nashville, and I'm pretty sure this is where she picked this card up and she gave us all this, and she also kitted it up because she's the best. Uh, so this is um, Stitch or Die Pin Cushion, which I just love, which is heartstring samplery. Stitch or die. And it's got a cat on it and scissors and stuff. And I love it. Thanks, Tash. That's a great little small that I'll just start. I've seen, um, I think Lorna's, Lorna started it at the retreat. I think Sydney started it. Anyway, we'll start it. This one here's a bit special. So I got this at the retreat. Tash gave it to me, but it actually was a gift from the beautiful Stephanie from Lindy Stitches. So I said that Tash went to Nashville and because I knew that I've, I've not met Stephanie, but I just love her channel. I think she's just great. <laughs> We're actually friends and she doesn't even know it. Sorry. Um, so I said to Tash, you must drop past Lindy Stitches, you're going to go see, she said, yes, I'm going to go see Stephanie. Um, I said, can you just say hello to her from me because I just think she's great. Give her a hug from me. Tell her I said hello. Like, And she did. And Stephanie sent me back a little chart with a little note and it says, Claire, heart, 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 why were you not in Tasha's suitcase? That's a good question. Please arrange for next year. XOXO, Steph. Bit of a fangirl moment. Anyway. Um, I'm a dog. Sorry, Stephanie. Hope I'm not freaking you out. <laughs> um, oh, I saw you all at StitchCon too. I'm totally jealous about that. Whatever. Um, birds to the bow, bow, bow. Anyway, it's one of her bird samplers. She's got a new one out this year, which has got the granny rug around the edge, which is cool too. And um, she gifted me this. And well, the colours are to die for. And they're so well presented, so well presented, these are, Stephanie. They look just beautiful. And it's been so nice to watch her business just grow from, you know, watching, you know, she released a couple of little charts and on Etsy and now they're all printed and she goes to Nashville and just smashes it. Um, uh, this is actually from Tasha's mum has a store and you can buy this from there. Um, motive by hand. Um, I'll put that down here. That's Tasha's mum's store, so you can get lovely things from her there too. She gets all this cool stuff from Nashville. So if you want any of that, you can go check out her store. Um, so thanks, Stephanie. Total fan. Anyway, so those were from the – I got those from Tash. Um, now – oh. You all know Teresa Craig on Floss Tube? If you don't, go check her out. She's great, funny, happiest girl in the world, always laughing, um, and the best hair ever. So she gifted these. Oh, you can see a little sneak peek in there. Look at this project bag. Shut up. Now, these are from um, another friend of ours, Taryn, 
um, who has uh, Facebook. I don't know if she's on Etsy, but she's definitely on Facebook. Taryn's shop is T's, um, I can see it in my head, but I can't pronounce it, but I'll put it down here. <laughs> so Taryn makes beautiful accessories, project bags, grab guards, library bags. My son has a library bag from Taryn, Star Wars library bag, takes it every, well, he's taking it today because Wednesday's library day, and he also has a pencil case. She makes lots of accessories and stuff like that. Her sewing is great, and she makes these project bags, which are perfect for a 11 by 11 Q-snap. And they have this plastic front so you can see what's in there. And this is for me because I love coffee. Did I mention I love coffee? Funnily enough, both Teresa and Taryn also knew that I love coffee. So I got this beautiful project bag and it's absolutely amazing quality. And look, it's amazing quality when you go from the only projects you've owned prior to this one. Oh. These ones that you made yourself. Now I'm not going to bag them out, but they're pretty basic. But they, th these I made, right? They're just a project envelope. If you don't think you can sew, you can sew one of these. And this, um, I followed the tutorial on Vonna's tutorial for a project envelope, um, which, you know, if you've not watched Vonna the Twisted Stitcher, Vonna Pfeiffer, you are missing out on one of the great contributors to our community. Um so you can make one of these project bags, and it's pretty basic. You can put a little button or Velcro there if you want. I haven't bothered. I just made them. They're really simple. They're great. I love them. But then you get something like this, and you're like, okay, we've gone up a level here. Um, so it's beautiful. Um, and the other thing, I'll show you what's in there in a second. And the other thing I got, oh, I got a couple of little other things. This one was from Lorna. Might be my favorite thing that I own in my life little needle minder it says mitigong rocks 2019 because it does thanks lorna and i also got um just some little bits and pieces um i got a little um i haven't got it here i've got a little i got a little mill hill kit from sandra amongst some other beautiful things as well thank you darling and um including this little tin and she said that that is me and my son, Alex, which is true. So lots of lovely gifts from the girls. And then this one, this has a bit of a special spot for me. <laughs> so while we were there, I mentioned Sylvana before, who's an amazing cross-stitcher, um, particularly on her Mirabilia conversions, well, amongst everything else. But she's also a really amazing seamstress. And so she brought her sewing machine along and her and Sid Sydney, she decided Sydney was going to learn how to make a project bag. So Silvana and her spent the day, spent the day on this project and it was just so beautiful to watch these two. They were just so cute, just having this most lovely time together and the whole time they were creating this bag for me. So Silvana found this fabric which she thought was perfect for me and we coordinated with some other fabric and a zipper and everything else and they made this. I know, I know. See this? See this? See this? Now, it's bespoke. It's a one-off. It's custom. It's got French seams. And Sydney made this, and it's just the most beautiful thing because not only is it beautiful, like, I mean, the colours and every like, it's beautiful, but the love that went into this just means so much to me. <laughs> it's just the most gorgeous thing. And I've just put a scissor fob on there because it just deserved to be blinged because it's so beautiful. And so this has got my um, uh, Wonders of the Ancient World map. Why did my laptop just beep at me? So they made that for me and I got that and I love it and I will treasure it for my entire life and I will always remember the day that it was made. It was just gorgeous. So thank you. Um, so that's what I got from the girls. That's some of the things I got from the girls. Um, oh, and just for something different, then it was my son's seventh birthday, so I made him a pirate cake because he loves pirates. Here's a photo. Um, so that was fun. And then I, oh, so project bags seem to be the theme of the last two months for me. So I was contacted by a um, an Etsy store that's located in Ukraine 
And the girls at Wood and Cat, Wood and Cat, they said to me they wanted to see if I would like to sample some of their products. And I said, sure. I said, of course. I looked at their Etsy page. Their, page, their stuff looks just gorgeous. And I said that I would, sure. <laughs> I said I'd show my followers and I on Instagram and on and on um, Floss Tube. And if you like them, well, you know where to go and get them. So there's this beautiful, oh, and they've got a discount going until the 15th of this month, 10%, if you use this code. How about that? I'll put the details up of that in a minute. Anyway, so they sent me this project bag and little goodies. Now, this is called a combo for cross-stitch kit. Oh, no, plus the bag. Anyway, they're really cute. So you get this, right? So it's a Kisnet bag. Look at that. Not only that, but look at that. Custom. Five stitches. Ah! So you can get whatever you want put on there. They'll put your name on there or whatever. And then, so I also got, well, you get this. Look at this. Pyrex stitches. Now, this is a magnetic grime guard. Now, this is like if you're using a Q-snap or a um, hoop and you want to hold it but you don't want to get grubby on it, you just click that on and you hold there while you stitch. Isn't that clever? Um, they also sent me this comes with one of these cute right and here's another project on who a grime guard a needle minder and the grime guard is also personalized look at that pyrex stitches i know shut up so i'm loving this bag like if you especially if you're a traveling kind of cross stitcher this is brilliant because it's got a shoulder strap. I've never had a project pay with a shoulder strap. And it's great. Absolutely love it. So if you're interested in their things, these are just some of the things they make. Um, you can go to the Etsy page and, like I said, there's a code. If you put this code in until the 15th of July, I think. Gosh, I better be right on this. Let me be completely correct before I give out the wrong information. Yes, 10% discount until the 16th of July um, if you use the code Pyrex10. So there you go. Isn't that nice? Isn't that generous? So if you like this stuff, go to their Etsy store, check it out, tell them I sent you, and, yeah, very nice. Um, so this project, now we can move on to this project. So when I got back and I didn't I worked on one other project, but I felt like I was on my frame and I really felt like I wanted to work on something in a Q-snap, mainly because I got this Q-snap bag and this grind guard and I really wanted to try it out. Um, so I decided to move this project from the frame to the hoop, to the Q-snap. So this one here is a sunset kit called Treasures from Home. And here we are. So I've done, I've done this plate, and I think a bit of the cow, and then I'm moving this way. So I've done all of this side now. I'm doing all the back stitching as I go because that will make your life better. And just moving over here, starting to fill it all in. So all this, um, all that there is completely done now. That's all back stitched and everything. And filling in there, I've done most of that, and I'm kind of working over this bit, yeah. And that's just on a um, 28 count Cashier white linen. And it's really, I think this is my favourite type of stitching, to be honest. It's the most enjoyable, just having blocks of colour to do, and I just find it really relaxing and easy and just satisfying. So I love all cross stitch, but you know. This type of stuff, this type of 90s stuff has a place in my heart. Okay, who knows it? So that's that, and all tucked up in this super cute little bag, and it's even got a little pocket at the front, so you can put things in there. There's a note from them that they sent me, and then little bits. Here's a little, here's their Instagram and stuff, wood and cat. 
So you've got this little, everything's tucked away in there and pull over your shoulder and off you go. And, of course, it's turquoise because Pyrex. So a um, little project I started on just before I, I went back to that piece, actually, is when I was at Minigong with the girls, I said, well, something got mentioned about round robins, and I said, oh, I never do a round robin. No, I don't like the pressure. Oh, no. And then someone said, yeah, but what if we did one, just us? And I was like, oh, yeah, that would be totally different. <laughs> so I went from like, oh, I'd never do one, to literally within 30 seconds, like, yeah, we should totally do it. Let's organise it. And I had a, already started organising it. So um, we all have decided to choose a piece. Actually, this is a really good time and I'm doing this video because I've got to send this away the next couple of days. Um, we all just, uh, excuse me, we are all choosing a piece. We start stitching on it and then we send it round and there's nine of us. So then we send it round and um, in a year it should be, have been stitched on by everyone. If it's not finished, it doesn't matter. If you don't get much time to stitch on it before you have to send it on, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Nothing matters. No stress. So what I've chosen to stitch on is Raspberry Homecoming, which is a told in a garden, um, which is a Marilyn, I can't say her surname, Lavender and Lace lady. Told in a garden, butternut road, and yeah, these guys. Um, so, told in a sorry, ra raspberry homecoming. I started. This is my section complete. So, um, I've divided the chart up into nine sections, and I've said, do what you want. I've changed the raspberries on the bush down there. I've added some beads just to be different. And the girls can customise it as much or as little as they want, put some stitches in and send it on. So I'm really excited about that. I'm changing it to Mitigon Homecoming um, because why not? And I've charted Mitigon. And, yeah, so the girls will stitch on that as they can and send it round and then hopefully in a year's time it'll be close to being finished anyway. So I'm really excited about that. This is on a um, linen that I've had for a while. I'm not sure what it is. Something dark I just had that I thought would be nice. And it's a, just an easy stitch. I thought that would be good for the girls too, just to, you know, no pressure. And it's not a lot that you is in each section. So anyway, that's that. So that's another little project I've got going. My first round robin, which is kind of exciting. And then just a couple of other little things to show you. Um, my parents just got back from a 10-week cruise, wouldn't it be nice? And on their cruise, they went to Canada. Um, I told them to wave on their way by, um, Pam. Um, and they got me this, Puffin Study 1, counter cross stitch. It's the horned puffin. That is a horned puffin. I know nothing of the puffin. Um, nickname the sea parrot. These clownish looking seabirds are called Pelanic, from a Greek word meaning open sea. Anyway, there you go. Everything you needed about puffins. Um, so I got that. Thanks, Mum. Don't you love when people give you cross stitch gifts? Very exciting. Now for something entirely different. So at, my son is in year one, uh, which he's seven years old. So that's the second year at school. I don't know, everywhere around the world calls these things differently. First year of school is called kindergarten in this state where I live, and then year one. Anyway, so he's in year one, and this whole term they've been talking about the olden days. Alex thinks the olden days is like 1906, but anyway. Um, they're doing the thing for the olden days, and I got this note home from school saying that, uh, this coming Friday, which is the last day of term, the children are going to have a history day and they'll be able to dress up in something olden days. Alex is going as a cowboy. <laughs> um, 
if anyone would like to come and talk to the children about something from the olden days, maybe someone's got a story, maybe you've got a skill, an olden day skill that you might, you know, like to share with the children, like butter churning. <laughs> and I thought cross-stitch. Now, if cross-stitch isn't an olden days thing, I don't know what is. So I put my hand up and I said, um, would you like me to come along and I could teach the children how to do cross-stitch? And the teacher was really excited because she used to cross-stitch when she was young. And she's super sweet. Anyway, so she was like, yes, that would be amazing. And I said, well, why don't I make up a little kit for each child and a little design and instead of doing sport on Friday, the children can choose to come and do cross-stitch. And then she asked the kids how many wanted to do it and 28 of them want to do it, which is great because that's like half the class. There's two, two classes, you know, I think 25 and 25 or 24 and 24. Anyway, so 28 out of those 50-odd children have chosen to come and do cross-stitch with me, which is pretty exciting. Um, so I made up two, I made two little simple designs. I've got a little fish and I've got a little butterfly. And I've got some floss, kitted them up, and I've got some fabric. Now, the fabric I'm using is 11 count that I had, which was actually originally from the green tree. You remember the green tree, which is, anyway, this is some 11 count fabric that I had in my stash, which was already pre-gridded. And I thought, well, that's pretty good. And I had enough needles in my stash, and that's, these are like size 24s, um, I think I've also got some 22s there, so some nice big tapestry needles. I had enough tapestry needles in my stash from, you know, you know like how you get a needle in every kit and I normally get the needle and it's too big and I like to use a, normally a size 26 or a 28 bow needle. So I'll just put the needle in a tin and I've collected like, you know, plus I had all these gold plate needles I had plenty of needles. <laughs> so I, um, yeah, so I every kit gets a needle and every and I cut out, you know, four inch by four inch 11 count. And I found this great app. It's called Stitch Fiddle, Stitch Fiddle. And you can chart your own cross-stitch design. Just I mean, it's great for simple stuff like this. You go for this colour and this colour. But I've just done it really simple, you know, colour. And not many, only three colours per chart. And it will fit. Did I fit that one? I stitched them up. So there's the butterfly. And there's the fish. I washed the fish to show them that the grid lines come out in cold water once they've washed it. And... I'm going to show them how to stitch that. What do you reckon? I hope it's not too complicated for them. Like I said, there's seven. Um, they won't get it done in the time because I stitched these up and they took me an hour to do. So, you know, they'll, they'll take me a little while. But I'm sending them home with instructions, a simple, I typed out some instructions with some diagrams and stuff of what cross-stitch is and just basically I'm not going to worry about, you know, I thought I'd teach them I think it's called the Danish method. I think that's what it's referred to. Danish method where you just do one cross, one cross, and then move on to the next one rather than doing the and then back that way, which I believe is called the English method. Or maybe it's around the other way. I don't remember. Um, and I'm not going to worry about which direction the top stitch is and all that sort of stuff. It's just about filling in the X's where the colour is. Um, and some, yeah, some simple instructions to send home with them so they can finish it with their parents and a little suggestion that they can make it into a little pillow ornament if they want to. Anyway, so that's me teaching cross-stitch to the kids. That'll be fun. Be interesting experience. See how how they take to it. But I keep having, when I drop Alex off at school, I've had a couple of little kids come up to me and go, I'm so excited. I'm going to do cross-stitch with you on Friday. I'm like, pumped, okay. So maybe I'll be able to, if I just inspire one little kid to just think, hmm, I remember when I did that at school with that old lady. <laughs> and then they start cross-stitching. That'd be kind of cool, wouldn't it? Anyway, 
That's it. Done. Uh, what are my plans moving forward? I'm going to finish that Treasures from Home one. I just want to get that done. I'm kind of like the idea of working to a finish these days. That'd be good. Um, I'll have my round robin coming soon from Lorna. I'll show you that. If I have, if I make a video while I've got that, I'll show you that. Um, and then, I don't know, just pick up one of my other whips and just whip on through. I hope you have a lovely July and I will see you somewhere in the future. Um, see you on Instagram or Facebook or here. Bye.